Our Heavenly Father, we come now with bowed heads and humble hearts, thanking you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day. Not because we've been good, but because you are good. Lord, we thank you for your watchful life while we slumbered and slept. And we thank you for your touch of love that we were able to awaken this morning and have portions of our help, have a portion of our mind, and Lord, determined to come out to the house of worship that we might give you praise. Lord, we thank you for those who had a desire to come but were not able. Father, we thank you for those who came and maybe didn't want to come. But Lord, we pray through our coming that we will still be blessed. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our many sins. Lord, we know we have sinned by uh, thoughts, words, and deeds. And Lord, we ask now as we offer our praise to you that it will be received. And Lord, that you will be moved on your throne in heaven that we might see a result here on earth. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. We offer thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. All your words shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. I read to you our opening scripture from Psalms 145 and 10 and Revelation 11 and 7. May the Lord bless the reader and the hearers of his word.
Our scripture this morning become from St. John, chapter 14, beginning the first verse, and the reason follows. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where thou go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know is the way. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I read John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of holy words. Let us bow our head for prayer. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we come with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord. We realize, Lord, that we didn't do anything to deserve to be here right now, Lord, but it was all because of your grace and your mercy. Thank you for just being with us throughout this week, watching over us as we went up and down these dangerous highways through seen and unseen danger, Lord. You protected us, Lord. And we just want to say thank you. We thank you for waking us in our right mind this morning. We want to come out to the house of worship, Lord, to give you praise, to give you honor. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He hung, he bled, he died. They beat him, and he didn't, didn't say a mumbling word, Lord. He could have. He could have gotten off of that cross, Lord, but it was love. He loved us so, and, and we should love him just the same. We could never repay him, Lord, never. We ask that you would just forgive us for our many sins, for we realize we sin daily, Lord, knowing and unknowingly, Lord. We ask that you just touch our heart where we will be what you would have us to be, Lord. Bless us where we are here to please you, Lord, and not man. Help us to understand that, Lord, because some of us think we're here as long as we can please our friends or others that we're good, but not so. Lord, we ask that you would just bless our young, young children today, Lord, as well as our adult, Lord. Lord, we're, we're living in a mean world, Lord. Day by day, just here in Mississippi, we're, we're, we're not afraid to, to, sh to take a life, Lord. And, and it shouldn't be that way, Lord. We ask that you would just give us a, a solution to help, help these young folks. Help the older folks, Lord. Well, you don't have to take a life just because you have a disagreement with someone, Lord. Lord, we ask you to just bless our pastor this morning. Continue to just bless him physical, mentally, and financially, Lord. Bless his family, Lord. Lord, you know him better than than any of us, Lord. You know what he need, when he needed, and how he needed. And you could give it to him, Lord. Lord, we ask you just bless all, all of our associates, Lord. Continue to watch over them. Bless their family. Bless them where they will be there to assist our pastor, Lord. And bless each one here today under the sound of my voice, Lord. Help us to realize we all have problems, situations, circumstances that we we don't know how to deal with, Lord, but there's power in your name. All we have to do is just call on your name, Lord. Lord, bless our church service today, Lord. Bless it will be pleasing in your sight, Lord, and someone would receive you 
know that you live because you live in us. Lord, when we come down to the end of our journey, Lord, we ask that you would just please give us a seat in our kingdom. These prayers are blessing in your darling son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Thank the Lord for all our being here this morning. We are praying today on our prayer list, Brother Javante Scott, Sister Sandra Bell, Brother Sean and Jasmine Cockle, Brother R.D. Rice, Brother Broderick Scott, Sister Sarah Colley, Sister Emma Gallard, Sister Patricia Tuggle, Sister Bertha Brown, the Abrevian Howell family, Sister Teresa Neal, Sister Alexis Warren, Sister Brenda Irvin, the Lucius family, the Hill family, the Staples family, Sister Linda and Brother Sammy Vasco, Brother Eddie Scott, Sir Boris Pippen. For the sick and shut in, we have Sister Catherine Lee, Sister Shirley Hodges, uh, Antonio Hayden. The Reed men, the Brewer family, the Dixon family, the Eddie Blount Sr. family, the Lucius family, the Malone family, the McClellan family, and the Walker Bronson Burnett family. Praise the, Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise 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 the Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us be mindful of the announcements as well as those on the sick and prayer list. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to come into the house of prayer one more time. As we slumbered and slept, you watched over us all night long and sent your angels to touch us with a finger of love that gave us the strength, the mobility, and the direction to come into your house today and give you praise because you are the joy and strength of our life. Father, we ask you to come into this place and have your way. Let this worship service be the best worship service we've ever had in our life. Father, because we are growing and we are a work in progress and only through you we can prosper and grow. So Father, we have dealt with the milk of the word Father, let us be able to go on to be able to chew the meat. So, Father, we rely on you to strengthen us and guide us on the way you would have us to go. Father, we want you to touch those who gave today, those who were able to tithe and those who weren't able to tithe, those who weren't able to give and wanted to give. Father, bless them in a special way and let them know that they're still counted for. Just because they didn't have don't mean they won't have one day. But only through you and your blessings that we will be blessed and we will have to uplift your up bloodstained banner one day. And you will be able to give us joy and peace forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
musicians and our choir members for leading us into such beautiful and meaningful song service this morning. Amen. And uh, if, if you had ears to hear, whether you were looking or not, you heard it. <laughs> Amen. So it's up to us to respond according to the Holy Spirit. Now you wonder why I'm up here this morning. I'm up here because I have another nephew that's going to come and bring the message this morning. The nephew that's going to come this morning, his name is Terrence Winner. He's a member of the First Baptist Church in Aliceville, Alabama, and Reverend Timothy Morgan is his pastor. And he's no stranger here. He has preached many times before. And we want you to have uh, 
the welcome in your heart that he can see the expression on your face and know that he's not in a strange place, that he's among other Christians. So we're going to ask you, Brother Terrence, to come and just be at home and allow God to use you. So the next voice that you hear will be that of Reverend Terrence Wyndham. About two hours to get ready to go and see and see this time I got 30 minutes to get ready to go so it's a little it's a little little nerve-wracking amen 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 it's a it's a blessing to be here this morning amen hey amen. Amen. hey I'm, I'm gonna get it wrap it on up then real that's it that's it but it's good to be here this morning amen amen I, I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord is anybody here glad today is anybody here happy about what God has done for them today? Amen, amen. I'm reminded of another scripture that says this is the day. I don't know about us having tomorrow. I don't know about us having next week. But I know that the scripture says that this is the day that the Lord has made. And it gives us a command. It said we should what? Rejoice and be glad. Amen. So if anybody here can say hallelujah for what God has done, anybody can say thank you, Jesus, for the blessings that he has bestowed upon you. Amen. It's a, it's a blessing to be here. Amen. 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 Giving reverence to God, giving honor to your fine pastor, to Pastor Henry, to all the ministers that grace the roster. To the deacons, officers, members, and friends and family. To my family, to my mother, my wife, my uh, children in their absence. Again, it's a blessing to be here today. Amen. Amen. And to all those who may be viewing us virtually, we thank you for tuning in to today's worship. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. I don't want to be before you too long, so you can say I'm glad to see him come, and I'm glad to see him go. So with that being said, I'm going to try to get into this word, but guess what? You can help me usher in the presence of the Lord, amen? How can you do that? Well, you can say amen, you can nod your head, you can clap, you can stand up. If pastor let you, you can run around the church. I don't know. But guess what? I just need to know that you're getting something from the word. Amen. 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 For those of you who have your Bibles today, lest I hold you too long. And again, we want to thank each and every one of you for your hugs, your warm welcomes. As always, when I come to this church, I feel like it's home. Amen. Amen. I tell folks I have three home churches. We're going to look at Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke, the 15th chapter. We're going to start at verse 13 or 14. But I tell people as you guys are turning that I have, I've had the pleasure of having four church homes. Four church homes. Somebody looked, how can you have four church homes? Well, I got my church home in Russellville, Alabama. That's where I grew up until I was 12. Luke the 15th chapter. We're going to look at verse 14 through a few verses that follow. So I got Aliceville. That's my second home. Then I got Jacksonville, Alabama. That's where I went to college and matriculated not only in education but also spiritually. And then I have my married into the family church home. And that's Mount Olive, right here, amen? So it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be here. Again, we're going to look at Luke, the 15th chapter, and I'm going to read, if it allows, from the New International Version. It might read differently, but it says the same thing. Luke, the 15th chapter, and it says this. Talking about a very familiar scripture, the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son. 13th verse reads like this, not long after that, the young son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. 
after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him nothing. Verse 17, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. You may be seated. Just for a few minutes today, I want to talk from the topic of you don't have to settle for slop. You don't have to settle for slop. Somebody ought to say amen because they already know this, amen. This ain't nothing new for some of them seasoned Christians right here. But I remember back growing in Aliceville, as you may be seated, thank you for serving. I remember growing up in Aliceville, being with my grandfather, his name, they call him Hook. And what he had was he had hogs. And every time when we would come to his house on Sundays or even throughout the week, we would eat all our food and my grandmother would have this red chitlin bucket. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That chitlin bucket wasn't done with when the chitlin was out of here. Y'all know we use it for a whole bunch of stuff. And so what they use it for, maybe y'all didn't, but I know, I know we did then. But we used that chitlin bucket to put the hog's food inside. And so each and every day he would put this food inside as they would eat breakfast. They would rake it off in to eat lunch. They would rake it off in to eat dinner. They would rake it off in. And what they would do is use that food to slop the hog. And what we do, we get in my granddad's old Ford F-150 and we'll go and slop the hog, which means that was to feed the hog. And inside of this bucket, you will have all kinds of stuff. You will have corn, biscuits, you will have okra, you will have fried chicken left over. You will have all kinds of stuff because the hog didn't care what it ate. It didn't matter what it was and it stuffed its nose inside of it just like it was some peach cobbler that me and you would eat right now to this day. Amen. But as I look and as I even see a chicken sitting outside the house, because if you hang around here long enough, it might get fried. But as I, as I look and see that and I saw that food that was getting ate by this hog, I could, it disgusted me to see all that nastiness inside of it. But to that hog, it was something real good. And I had to look back and as I reflected on this message, I looked back and saw and said that there were some times where I didn't care about what I saw. I didn't care about what I did. I didn't care about how I acted. And to myself, I was slopping myself. Amen? I slopped myself in my speech. I might have slopped myself in relationships. I might have slopped myself and acted sloppily in my job. I might have had some friends and I was slopping with that. I might have had some my health condition and slopping with that. And even if we look closely and garrulize, we'll see that we might have even had a sloppy relationship with God. Amen. But this is the text, this is the part that brings us to the text in this miracle, which is a parable told to Jesus, told by Jesus in Luke. The 15th chapter here we see that is the beginnings of the story, not just through the that shows us how Christian faith is, but also a story that shows us our relationship to the world as through the prodigal son. The word prodigal, as we analyze that word, it means to be reckless. It means to be extravagant. It can be extra described by the wasteful spending and that lavish living that we saw that he was doing that transpired in verse 14 of the text. We see that a man who was wealthy, he had two sons and we assume he was wealthy because he was able to give a portion of the inheritance to the son. Amen. If you look back in that faith during that period of time, what would happen was if there were two sons, the oldest son would get two thirds of the, of the offering for the normal part. And the youngest son would get one third of it. And that was according to the law. So he asked for his portion a little bit early. Now, the father could have said no. But guess what? The father said, yes, go ahead and take it. And so after he had gotten all his things, he got all his money, got all this stuff. He goes out and he wastes his money on riotous living. Amen. Hey Amen. How many of us don't wasted our money on riotous living? I know I have. Riotous living don't just mean you were going to the club now. 
Righteous living could be buying something that we don't need. Yeah. Righteous living could be spending money that we need to be saving. Yeah. Righteous living could be doing all kinds of stuff. But if we look at this text, we see that he spent all his money up. And guess what? As he got all his money spent, he realized he had to pack up his little grip and find somewhere else to stay. Because he had to go to this far country. This far country where he could find some help. And at this point in time, there was a famine that had came in this text. Yeah. And we can equate the famine to what's going on right now. What has went on in the last year, there was a yeah. pandemic, for a lack of a better word, yeah. Yeah. that went on in the country. Yeah. Yeah. And when this pandemic went on, he had to find some work. Yeah. He didn't have no money. He didn't have nobody he could lean on. He didn't ask daddy for all the money. He didn't have no relatives. All the folks he might have spent the money with couldn't help him put money together to where he needed to be, which might be a lesson for some, but quit spending money on folk that ain't going to give him nothing back when you need some. Amen? That wasn't part of the text. Don't shoot me when you get out of here now. But things got so bad that he was now joined or glued to this citizen who had helped him, had to help him yeah. with the job. Yeah. And this job that he has, he has to slop the hogs. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks as he's slopping the hogs and he's bringing out, I imagine, that they had big buckets. It wasn't a chitlin bucket, but it might have been something that was similar. And they, uh -huh. he's laying that food down to him, and them hogs just going down at it. <laughs> and he's looking at this like, these hogs. They eating better than me. And then he not only says the hogs are eating better than he is, but then he starts to reflect. And he says, not only are these hogs eating better than I am, but the slaves who work with my family eating better than me because they get leftovers and I can't even get slop from the hog. So we see here in this text that there's a few things that we need to look at, and I'm almost done. I got three R's I want us to remember, and then we can go to our seat, and we can learn that in our life, in our situations, in our circumstances, we don't have to settle for slop. How can we not settle for slop? Well, first, we have to remember the Father's provision. If we look at the text, we'll see that the Son came to, them, to himself. And this means that up until this point, he had forgotten exactly who his father was. He had forgotten where his provision originally even came from. He was able to not be sustained as a son, but all of this wealth was sustained before he left it. But yet and still, now he's standing for and working for a citizen who wasn't even able to give him food outside of feeding the hogs. The son had a mindset that I like to call us Christians, and he did something that uh, all of us sometimes do, which he, number one, he wanted his inheritance right then. And meaning, I call them the J.G. Wentworth Christians. <laughs> you know what that is? Y'all heard that commercial before? It's my money, and I want it now. Y'all heard that before? Well, guess what? Sometimes we say, Lord, it's my stuff, and I want it now. God might have told you that something was coming to pass, or God might not have even told you something was coming to pass, but you say, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, and because we listen to too much prosperity and foolishness, we realize, or think we realize, that God is going to give us something right then, amen? amen? But guess what? God is not always going to give us what we want, when we want it, how we want it, and as much as we want. Sometimes God has to condition us to be able to receive what it is that we are asking for God. So not only did he ask for his inheritance, he also asked for freedom. He asked for his freedom. And we see that he was not ready to be free. Some of us are not ready to be free. He was young in the mind. He had all this money. He had all this power, all this influence. And guess what? He had it. But as soon as he had it, it got gone from him then. Sometimes God has to hold us up before he can give us something because the thing that we want, the same thing that want us to, that we need to, our claim we need to be free, guess what? It's the same thing that will cause our destruction. So sometimes the reason why you don't have that man, don't have that woman, don't have that boyfriend, don't have that girlfriend, don't have that car, don't have that house is because if you have that much freedom, 
Y'all talk to me. Now, if you had all the freedom in the world, guess what? I cannot be honest with you today. If I, if I had bought my house before I had met my wife, I probably wouldn't be married today then. Because I had too much freedom. I had my own house. I was 23 years old. 22 years old. Guess what? Y'all know what's up. But guess what? I'm glad that God prepared my mindset to be able to handle what he gave me before. Amen. And if we be real with ourselves, sometimes God can't give us stuff because our mindset just ain't ready. Amen. Amen. Not only must we first, we have to realize to remember the father's provision. Secondly, we should also remember to reflect on our plight. Reflect on our plight. As you look at verse 17, you'll see that the young man is now evaluating his current situation. The young man has had and is in his valley experience, and he took some time to reflect upon his plight. He saw that he was perishing compared to where he was flourishing at one point. He was empowered when he was with his father, but now he was empty. He was lifted up by his friends when he had money, but now he was lonely. He was elated when he had all the resources, but now he was unhappy. He was halting because he had he had all that and he was all that in a bag of chips, but now he was humiliated. He was well to do because he had all the money he wanted, but now he was destitute because he was broke and didn't have a dime. But this is an important step that the young man did not need to skip because if he had skipped it, he would not have came to his senses. If you look at this text, you'll see that he analyzed where he was. And then after he analyzed it where he was, he realized he needed to make a change. You see, sometimes we have to get to that bottom, bottom part so God can scrape out all the foolishness away from us so we can see exactly what's going on and then we can make a wise decision. Sometimes we have to clear out our mind, we have to clear out our hearts, clear out everything around us in order to get to the root of what God is trying to tell us. Amen. Hey man, can I tell y'all, can I tell us parents and us, 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 us advisors and all the mother folk stuff? Guess what? Sometimes it ain't nobody else that can get somebody to change their mind except for two people. Guess who they are? It ain't nobody but God and themselves. You can add, mama can beg, daddy can beg. Grandmama can beg, sister can beg, brother can beg, pastor can beg, girlfriend, boyfriend can beg, husband and wife can beg. But guess what? Until they analyze it for themselves, they will not make a change. Amen? How do I know? Now, if we can use our spiritual imagination, yeah. this, pr this prodigal son was yeah. taught the wise things of what to do. Yeah. This prodigal son was given a good, right, good right living, as we would call it. But guess what? He decided that he wanted to stray and do what he wanted to do. It wasn't no fault of the prodigal son daddy that he did that. That was his own choice. So guess what? He allowed him to walk in his choice. And sometimes we got to quit trying to save everybody. Tell them what the word of God says and leave it alone. Because guess what? You can't make them change their mind. I'm sorry. I don't know who I was talking to, but I had to get off on that subject then. If you look at Alcohol Anonymous, y'all heard of Alcohol Anonymous? Yeah. Guess what? The first step out of the 12-step 12, 12 program, I think it's 12-step, 7-step, whatever it is, the first step is you have to say, my name is Terrence Wendell, and I am an alcoholic. Because if you don't step to that one section, if you can't make that first admitting, all 11 other steps is going to be irrational. It's irrelevant. It's not going to change. We have to do the same. We have to realize my name is Terrence and I jack some up. And then once you say you jack, then you can start getting right then. But as long as we say, well, I ain't doing nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm Terrence. I'm not fit. You can do it. You can do it. And God does us the same way. God allows us a choice. God does not tell us that we have to do stuff. God gives us free moral agency. And he says, you can do it. Or you cannot do it. So not only must we realize that first we have to see 
That there, the first R is we got to remember God's provision. Secondly, we must make sure that we reflect on our own plight so we can stay away from the slop. But finally, we have to realize that we have, once we realize all these other things, we need to repent and restore, ask for restoration. Yeah. As we come to this close of the story, we look at verse 18 and we see that this is where we see some clear, concise steps. In verse 18, it specifically says that this gentleman said to himself, he said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. Amen. First step is that we have to repent. It states that he goes back to his father's house. We apologize for the actions that have taken. The steps that are changing our lives are about to be in full focus. But first we have to arise and get up. Secondly, we have to turn around. Make sure you don't do a 360, do a 180. Turn around and go in a different direction. See, sometimes we turn around, but we keep on turning around. And we back in the same direction that we started out before. But I encourage you to do a 180 and turn towards God and move toward that direction. Now the idea of repentance, we see here that this idea of is, is an idea of repentance, meaning that all of us, Jesus is telling this story, remember? As Jesus is telling this story, we see here that Jesus is telling the story of salvation. He's saying that all of us have done some things. All of us have turned around from God. All of us have wasted on riotous living. But this father is going to accept you regardless. So after you have done your part, after you have repented, then there is a restoration. And when that restoration comes, now you are fully engaged to what God is wanting to offer you. You see, he had took a third of all his stuff already. So the daddy didn't have to do nothing for him. But guess what? This father did more for him and told him, son, I'm not going to treat you like a servant. I'm going to do something even more special to you, if you can say that as a word. What is he going to do to you? I need somebody to volunteer for me right quick. Come on, stand up. Bring me that stuff right there on that box. What he did was he gave him, first he gave him, he gave him a robe. He might keep it. First, he gave him a robe. He put the robe around. Then, after he put the robe around, I'm going to tell you what all that means in just a second when I get back to my notes. He put the robe around him. Then, he put the ring on his finger. And then, after he put them rings on his finger, then he put some new shoes on him. He gave him some new shoes. Now, don't look at that box because you ain't ringing. He gave him some new shoes. And then after he, after he gave us a new shoe, he gave us some food to eat. You have to sit down now. Appreciate it. So the reason, and the reason why I did all that was because first he gave him the robe. The robe meant that he restored him home to the position of honor. It symbolizes when we are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Secondly, we said that he gave him the ring. Why did he give him a ring? It shows that it restored him to a position of authority. The son was not able to represent the father in the kingdom. Thirdly, he gave him some shoes. Why did he give him some shoes? Because it restored him. It elevated him above the level of servanthood, which means now he is not a servant, but he is a free man. And then finally, they had a feast. Why did they have a feast? Because this is a picture of peaceful reconciliation. Meaning that we can sit down and eat and I've accepted what has happened. You accepted that I love you and now you are back inside the fold. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me, amen. Because Jesus has done the same thing for us. Jesus, after he died on the cross, he could have just said, well, that's it then. I'm going to leave it alone. But he came down in 42 generations. He performed the miracles. He told the stories. He did what he was supposed to do. He died on the cross. He laid down his life. They laid him inside a tomb. But something happened in them three days when he was laid in the tomb. Amen. As he laid down, the devil thought that the enemy had won. It thought that, guess what? I can make Terrence settle for slop because Jesus is not dead. I can make 
you set up a slot because Jesus is now dead. But he did not realize that early on the third day, Jesus was going to get up with all power in his hands. And so now that I have the power of Jesus Christ that comes through me, now I don't have to set up a slot. So guess what? When the job trying to tell you some foolishness, guess what, baby? I don't have to set up for no slot. When that man try to tell you something crazy, I don't have to set up for no slot. When the enemy tries to come to you, I don't have to set up for no slot because Jesus Christ died for me. And I know if he died for me, then I mean something. I got a robe on. I got a ring on. I got some new shoes. I'm sitting at the table of feast because God is my provider. So, so as, as, as we come to a close today, I just want you to realize you don't have to settle for slot now. I know the enemy going to try to make you settle for it, but you don't have to settle for it. So it's going to feel good while we're in here. But once we hit them double doors, or once we pick up that cell phone, and somebody takes you with some foolishness, you let them know, baby, I know you try hard, but you, ain't, you, can't, sell, you can't block me. I ain't selling for no slot. So you can either lay it by the wayside, but I'm going to sit at the table. I deserve to be sitting at the table. I don't deserve to be on my knee with the hog. I am a believer of Christ. And that don't mean that your life going to be a flowery bed of ease. But what it does mean is that you have a hope that you can hope on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all other ground. May God bless and God keep you in our prayer. The doors of the church are open. There's someone here who wants to open under Christian experience, watch care. Or if they're trying to realize that I don't have to stand for no more slop. Guess what? That's, the doors of the church are open. Amen. Over here at Mount Olive, they'll welcome you in. They'll bring you down. They'll get you right. And most importantly, you'll be right with Jesus Christ. Because in that great getting up morning, I don't want no trouble at the gate. I don't want no gate trouble, as the old folks say. I want Jesus to tell me, God to tell me, sir, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over what? A few things. So now I'm going to make you a ruler over many things. What I don't want him to say is depart from me. Well, I preached in your name, depart from me. I baptized in your name, depart from me. I prayed for folks, depart from me. I sing from folks, depart from me. I know ye not, ye worker of iniquity. So if you don't want to hear them words, give your life to Christ today. Give your hand to the deacon, but most importantly, give your heart, mind, and soul to Jesus Christ. May God bless and God keep you in our prayer. God bless you.
up this morning and I'll be here a brand new day. Hallelujah. Oh. God for sending the word by Reverend Terrence this morning. Amen. Didn't he get all of us? <laughs> he talked about all of us. <laughs> Amen. But it was the Father that made the amends, not the Son. <laughs> That's what you got to remember. The daddy was in charge when he left, and the daddy was in charge when he come back. <laughs> I want you to know whatever you do, God allowed you to do it. And when you repent, God will forgive you. Amen. Amen. He is the source of our lives. I thank God this morning for you, Clint. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of you who have come out to be a part of this worship service. Amen. I'm not going to say it wouldn't be if you were not here because God is going to do what he's going to do with you or without you. So don't ever think you got God in control. <laughs> Amen. He has control over all of us. And the doors of the church has been open, and we have not had any response. But we hope we have had some change of hearts. Somebody's been encouraged, and your life is going to be better by being here today. Amen. Let us stand for our closing. You want to? Amen, amen. amen. Well, again, I thank you for the opportunity, Pastor, to speak here. Thank you all for listening. And again, let's uh, be prayerful for, for everybody, for one another, and encourage each other until we meet again. Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We thank you for the opportunity just to cherish working and living and being in a world in which we can worship and praise you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our church doors being open for. We know that last year this time we were not able to worship in union, unison. Heavenly Father, right now as we get ready to depart from this place, we ask that you continue to guide us with your Holy Spirit, guide our minds, guide our heart, guide our feet, guide our, guide our intentions. Dear Heavenly Father, let us know that we are children and ambassadors for you, dear Heavenly Father. The Lord, right now, as we get ready to depart from this place, but not your presence, we now ask that you be the leader and the guide of our soul. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let us end by saying, singing, amen. 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 amen.